Hello guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another Age of Sigmar tutorial. Uh, Games Workshop very kindly sent me out the beautiful new Flesh Eater Quartz Army box set, which contains a whole heap of new miniatures for Flesh Eater Quartz. Some of you guys sometimes, I think, assume that when I get this kind of stuff that I don't really know a lot about the army or the forest or how to paint it and stuff like that. So I did try and show off as much as possible the kind of things that I already have for these collections and things I've done before I kind of became a creator of content for these kind of things. So, for instance, here is my standing Flesh Eater Quartz Army. It's actually not all of it. I didn't bother taking any of the ghouls out. It's just... The Terra Geist and Zombie Dragon I have, plus my bigger ghouls and stuff like that. So, Crypt Horrors and Flares. So, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to Flesh Eater Quartz. It's one of my largest um, fully painted Age of Sigma armies that I own, and I love it to bits. So, I thought in today's video, I would show you guys how I paint my Flesh Eater Quartz very quickly, very accessibly. It's an absolutely stunning tutorial, and I get to say that because it's not mine. When I originally started this, army myself it was because of a particular video that i seen on squidmar's channel three years ago now at least i checked today and it was three years ago the video was uploaded it was painting a star collecting box in eight hours and they did a flesh eater one. it was actually the second time that lucas was on the channel and obviously he nailed it did an absolutely stunning job and inspired me to start collecting that army then and there so a big thank you to those guys the all of the recognition for this video goes to them i will absolutely link that video below so if you're interested in checking out flesh eater court you do enjoy the tutorial that i give you today and you want to see their version of it of course go down click below jump across and make sure you check it out isn't absolutely brilliant video. Like I said, I'm going to be tackling the Morgas Knight in this particular video. They're, in my opinion, the coolest new units. I'm going to do those in this one. But I do plan on doing the Terrorgeist, not Terrorgeist, sorry, the new Vargulf, uh, maybe the new um, Crypt Ghouls, no, Crypt, Crypt Guard. See, all the new names, trying to remember them all now. Uh, we'll be doing those kind of videos as well later on in the week. So if you are interested in those, uh, make sure you stick around. Now, before I get into the video, I just have two quick points. One, patrons, you're amazing. Thank you so much for all your support. It really does mean the world to me. Without you guys, I could not continue doing what I'm doing. If you're interested in getting involved with that, there are links to it in the description below. You get access to a private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys are just two of the awesome benefits for becoming a member. And two, I am trying to smash my way through to 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So it'd be very kind if you would hit that subscribe button, get involved and help me get there. All right, guys, now we are ready to um, start the video. So let's do that. Okay guys, so this is the miniature that I shall be painting today, and in the intro and the outro I called it a Morgas Knight when it's a Morbeg Knight, so... Whoops. So I got the model sprayed black and then sprayed grey sear. The funny thing about this, after I've going back through the Squidmar video that I used to uh, learn how to paint this army myself, and learned that this is probably where I got the entire thing where I spray models black and then spray them grey sear. This is literally the first time I can think about when I did it, and I've done it for pretty much all models since then. So that's another huge thing that I took away from that video. Literally how I prime 90% of models these days is with this technique. So once again, thanks guys. So the first coat I used is Dark Oath Flesh and I applied this all over the skin of this miniature, except the wings. It doesn't really matter what else you hit with it as every other color that goes on subsequent to this will be darker or will not be a contrast so you can go straight over it. So don't worry too much about that. Um, like I said, I, ignore, I avoided the wings, and on this particular Morbeg Knight, it is the champion one, so he has a big bat skull helmet over the over his mount's head, so I just avoid that as well. Uh, not entirely, though. I did hit the entire lower jaw, but shh, don't worry about that. After you got Dark Oath Flesh applied, you're going to look like something like this. As you can see, it's looking a little bit rough right now, but we're going to tidy that up with a quick dry brush of Rackarth Flesh. A nice soft bristled dry brush loaded up with paint obviously remove 90 percent of it or more until it's just leaving the slightest bit of paint behind when you uh do the dry brush technique and you will see it's not really doing a lot until i compare it from one side to the other and you can see how drastic the difference actually is how much it's tidying up the skin getting rid of some of that blotching and giving you the result that you want to achieve for that kind of dead flesh look to the skin it's super easy to do and has a huge impact on the model, so don't skip this stage. The Morbeg Knights are for sure my favorite new unit that they have released. I'm absolutely in love with them. I think it's a bare minimum. I'm going to do two units of six. So I can see 12 of these beasts stalking across the table. Hopefully they're good. After that, we're going to jump over to Wildwood. And this is for all of the bone and claws and teeth and any other bits and pieces like that. 
this is another one of those times I've said this kind of thing before in videos where you got to play a little bit of Where's Wally because there is so much bone actually showing through in different parts of his skin, like needles and stuff. So you literally have to search through. And then there's different parts as well going up the membrane of his wing. Now, most of the wing is going to go red. Like traditionally, I, I probably, like you, would have done the entire wing, like the bone bit that goes up the middle of it in that same color that I'm doing now. But having watched the previous video and followed that, the wings are going to go bright red which does look fantastic and all of the wing goes red you don't have to worry about any of the other bits trying to paint in and amongst them it does save you so much time when you're painting things like terror geists or uh crypt flares so please go along with this i promise you it's 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 a good thing carrienburg crimson is now used now this is an interesting step away from the standard video um, obviously they also use carrienburg crimson for this step which is can all the kind of creases and crevices and all the sore bits of skin where you know bone meets like gaps or scars or uh, for instance i've done inside the, the, the bat's ears and stuff here but when they did the video, it was the 28 mil pot, which obviously is a lot heavier of a coat. It gives a lot more red behind. Whereas now I'm using the new thinner Carrieburg Crimson, which I think does a fairly good job. It's actually a little bit more subtle. I think it does give a better result. But if you want to go more towards the traditional one that they've done in their video, then just do two coats of this and it will darken it up nicely. This is another one of those steps where I wouldn't have thought to do this myself. And that's why I think even me who creates videos on YouTube for painting miniatures watches so many videos on painting miniatures from YouTube to learn more tips and tricks. It's like a big community where I try and watch as many creators videos each week as I possibly can because there's always something to learn. Uh, and I do love that. I really do. I think everyone brings something different to the, the, the platform. Uh, and I think most of the time it's extremely positive and uh, it's worth your time. Uh, onto lead belcher now and i'm going to touch up some of the metallic parts on this now i went in with the uh wildwood and i painted pretty much all the metallics in that as well the silver color in the traditional video they don't do that they just leave them bare and then they go with lead belcher as a solid coat afterwards because i did the wildwood it basically means i can do almost like a highlight on the the metallics it leaves a nice dark kind of rusted brown look behind and then all you have to do is all the tips with the silver i think this turns out slightly better I think it looks really cool. After this, it's onto Nolan Oil, and this is just to throw a shade down on top of all of those metallics. So these Morbeg Knights obviously have more metallic than standard flesh eater cords traditionally have. Obviously, there's the his, his collar, his leash, uh, with a lot of metallic there. They do have a little bit of armor on each of their legs. He's wearing an armored helmet. He's carrying a sword, and then there's a few studs and stuff through his shield, which is holding on all of that flayed skin. When I went for the Carrieburg Crimson stage on the skin, especially on the flayed uh, parts on the shield, I went for Carrieburg Crimson on all the flat areas. And then the two faces that have been peeled off, I actually did though, left those quite pale, just so they stand out in the shield and you can see those kind of gnarly faces. Here's another break from the traditional video. The Pallid Witch Flesh, he applies with a brush and very carefully layers up all of that skin. I find for me that takes a little bit too much time, especially with the kind of scale of army that I was doing all in one go. It was 80 ghouls and a billion crypt flares and crypt horrors and stuff like that. I just didn't have time for that, wasn't interested. So I went for another light dry brush of the Pagged Witch Flesh across the, the model, which brightens it up a little bit. And I think it hits the nail on the mark for me. It's, it's I love it. After that, it's onto the Flesh Terrors Red. And this is for those wings that we talked about. And like you may have thought before, you might have gone for uh, the membranes being a different color. I did not. The entire wing got done in red. And then obviously in between his, I guess his shoulder blade, there's another small part of the wing, like a stabilization part or something like that. So make sure you do go in there with your uh, flesh tears red as well. And um, it makes kind of a huge difference. Now, a few steps that kind of happened throughout this model, which are a little bit different that I finished. Obviously, I gave the wings a little dry brush of orange. And they used, I think, squig orange in the video, which I believe is an old dry paint, which you also can no longer get. So I just used Riser Rust, which is another kind of dry paint, um, and did that a little bit. I painted Dorn Yellow in for his eyes, which comes straight from their video. Just add a little bit of highlight. And then I spent a little bit of time on uh, painting the skull face on the champion's mount. Obviously, not really a big deal because not all of them are going to have it just just this guy has a, a skull helmet on him so whether you want to focus on that or not it's totally up to you i did a bit of more gas bone and then i actually threw a sepia shade on top of it and then i brought it up with a bit of screaming skull again 
just like add an extra emphasis on the fact that this guy's a champion i did he deserves just a little bit more time and effort put into him um, and after i was done that i was quite happy I finished with the base in a traditional brown scheme threw on some yellow grass tufts just to really kind of finish him off and make him blend in with the rest of my flesh eater quartz uh, models and with this forest like i said it's actually a joy to paint if someone came into my room right now and was like, look, I need you to get the other two of those guys painted by the end of the day, I'd be like, deadly, no problem. Sounds like fun. Let me get let me get right on it. So I might jump on them fairly soon and add them to my flesh to cut shelf. That is already jam-packed and full, so I don't really know how I plan to do this, but I'll figure it out. I've gotten a couple of still images of what he looks like finally done and on the tabletop. Like I said, really proud of how he turns out. Once again, uh, Lucas's scheme worked a treat on all the new Flash Terror stuff, so big thank you to him for, for uh, putting that on the internet for the rest of us to use. Okay guys, and there we have it. We have got one of the beautiful new Morgas Knights painted up and ready to go. A little side note in there, I have cut out, cleaned up, assembled, sprayed, and painted this miniature for you guys, including making a video with a broken hand. So. I think I deserve a subscription for that. I mean, for nothing else, that particular thing. Um, so my videos for the next couple of weeks will, of course, be broken hand dependent. I don't know if there's certain things that I can't do with this hand that it's going to really slow me down, but hopefully it won't slow me down too much. And I'll be really releasing as much content as I normally do throughout the Christmas period. Once again, big thank you to Squidmar for their inspirational video that they put out three years ago that had convinced me to start this force and gave me the scheme that I have used. Once again, that is linked below if you want to check it out for yourself. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give the video a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below, including letting me know which one of the other miniatures from this box set you want to see next. Thanks for sticking around to the end, guys. I'll see you in the next video.